Ugh. I have honestly no idea how my brothers are even having a proper sleep schedule at this point. One task, only a single paper, and I'm up for hours. It's already completely dark outside. I can only imagine how much they must have on their plates. Being much closer to inheriting the throw and all. <sighs> no brain, not now. This is not the time to be thinking about my rather useless position in this household, thank you. Huh? Is that steps and humming? Is somebody cleaning the banquet hall at this hour? Look, let me take a quick look, just a little bit of curiosity. Hold on, is that, is that somebody dancing? Wow. I can barely see her. There's so little I can make out. Only her shadow floating from one spot to the other, twirling and twirling and twirling. Do I know her? I wonder if I do. What could it be that she is doing here? All on her own, humming along to her own melody, ever so peacefully? If only girls like her were in attendance at the official banquets, humming with her every step, just drawing me in. <laughs> what a stupid thing to think. She might as well be an intruder waiting for a chance to attack. I might as well watch her a little more, for safety reasons, of course. It's still impossible to make out her features, even from inside the room. Her hair color, her face, everything. I wonder, how many times has she danced here before? All by herself, without me noticing? There's not much you can do alone in this huge room. But there she is not caring about the emptiness around her. I should go, I, I really should. I bet she didn't intend for anyone to see her here. A pity. I wish I could have just stayed for a moment longer. <sighs> oh, oh, oh no. <clears throat> Please, I must apologize for my sudden intrusion. I didn't mean to scare you. I shall be damned. It's still too dark for me to see her face. But I can tell that she's frightened. I am like a deer waiting to be attacked. I didn't mean to cause her such distress. I should have just left her alone in her tiny bubble of happiness. Please, allow me to step a little closer. You will see that I'm not someone you need to be afraid of. See my hands? I come in peace, and I'm, I mean no harm. I was only passing when I heard you humming, you know? It was rather captivating, I must admit. But I, I didn't come to pry on you or anything. Oh, finally, I get to see who charmed me this quickly. Please, rise to your feet again. I, I was the one interrupting you. There's no, there's no need for such formalities. I'm, I'm sorry for making you do this. My uniform isn't making it easier, right? That's better. Don't don't feel afraid to look at me. Here, take my hand. I'll help you up. There we go. Speaking of formalities, let me stick to the protocol now as well, since we are officially meeting for the first time. I'm Pingley, third prince of Xander, third oldest child to the king and queen, and therefore third in line to the throne. It's a pleasure to be meeting you. May I ask for your name as well? What a unique name. I promise I won't forget it anytime soon. Now, how are you associated with this castle? Are you a guest of ours that I had yet to meet? A maid? For my sister? Well, that might explain why I haven't seen you around before. You are mostly working in her chambers, is that correct? Ah. Then it does make sense. She is not much of a fan of her brothers coming to visit her and entering her room. <laughs> I swear, we are not that bad. Just a little loud when we all come together. Ah, she chuckled. The way she scrunched her nose to die for. Wait, what? 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 Uh, she, <laughs> she complains about us leaving behind a mess every time we visit. Oh, come on. That's not true. I'm sure you know that too. 
but it sounds like you are getting along well. I'm glad to hear that. There's hardly enough time to get to know every single person working here. And that's really a pity. Hmm? My sister is treating you well, you say? Not that I was expecting anything else, but it still comes as a relief. She's a kind soul, but that also means that you are doing your job well, and I want to thank you for that. Getting up in the early hours to help us with our duties, and only going to bed after we do? That's not the most enjoyable lifestyle either. And nevertheless, you stay up at night, twirling through the banquet hall at two in the morning. I wonder why that might be. You... You want to feel like royalty? No, please, don't feel embarrassed about that. You must really have been working hard for all your life to feel this way. I don't want to pretend that I fully understand that, because I never have had to worry about food, shelter, and health. But I really do understand the appeal a big empty room has at night. They are so quiet, it feels like you can fill them with your dreams all the way to the top, and not a single soul in the world would care. Do you do that every night? Walking through the halls? Pretending to be someone you're not to escape reality for a moment? So it's the banquet hall that draws you in every now and then. The room with the huge windows lining the wall all the way from top to bottom. And a shimmering chandelier hanging from the ceiling. A room with so much space and unlimited opportunities to use it. Hmm. I don't think I've ever thought about it this way. For me, it's always connected to having to interact with guests that I also have authority over us, or hold power. It's always about impressions and pretending. And frankly, I'm really not the best at socializing. <laughs> Fair enough. There's a big difference between attending a ball as a prince and dancing here alone at night in your pajamas. Wait. Did you say pajamas? Oh. Oh, he oh, heavens, I'm sorry, I, I really didn't notice, I'm already looking away. N no, uh, wait, it's not, it's, it's not like I was looking at your clothes, or your body for that matter, I mean, I was, uh, I was watching you earlier, but not, not like that. Um, I, I just, I just thought you were really endearing, dancing through the room, and your little bubble of happiness, and, um, and, and yes, I couldn't stop watching, but that's not, that's not what I wanted to say, it's, it's just that I wasn't looking at you that way. If I made you uncomfortable, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't want to. I'm just, I'm just completely stupid and ruining every chance for a casual conversation with her that I might have had in this life. Yes, I just really bad at socializing. You've got that right. Okay, how do we go about this? It's autumn. How are you not freezing? A nightgown has such little fabric. Um, actually, let's, let's not talk about that. At least you're wearing your slippers. How about... Oh, I've got an idea. I'm not looking, I promise. Here, uh, take this. Don't worry about returning it. I'll just tell my sister and ask for her help. Like I said, she's actually a kind soul. But you know that, of course... It might be a cape, but if you use it like a blanket and wrap it around yourself, it should keep you warm. Exactly. Just like that. Turn once more and it's wrapped all around you. <laughs> yep, nearly there. So cute. Uh, I mean, good, good, so good, because that's some splendid fabric, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you are very welcome. Again, I'm sorry for interrupting your private time like this. I just couldn't stop myself from watching. Never, ever had I seen something, or rather, someone like you before. So I also must thank you for letting me into your dream bubble. What? Oh, don't worry. I will keep all this a secret. Our little secret, if you may. Just make sure to get back to your room safely, all right? My sister would have my head if she knew that I'd made you stay up all night. 
How about I accompany you to the stairs? <laughs> of course, you are right. I'm sure you would find the way just fine on your own, but please grant me that one minute to walk with you, will you? Great. Perfect. Thank you. So, <clears throat> my lady, how about you take my hand and we walk off into the night? Just the two of us. <laughs>